So we've made it through the four fundamentals of public speaking, and now we're actually moving into the speaking part of public speaking. And in this video, I'm gonna go through an overview of the nine steps to an amazing speech. I'm not gonna to go too into detail because there will be other videos that go through this template according to each speech that you are preparing for, but I just wanted to make one that just kind of roughly goes over all of the different parts of this um, digital packet. So um, I'm also gonna show you some examples. There's a whole bunch of stuff that's kind of thrown into this video with this just to give you kind of a starting point. And from there, we will build as we move through this unit. So nine steps to an amazing speech. An amazing speech doesn't just happen by accident. The best speeches are often the result of an immense amount of time spent planning, researching, writing, revising, practicing, and more. And all there are nine distinct steps in the speech writing process that when done correctly will result in an amazing speech that your audience will still be talking about the next day. So as we move down, um, there is a quick introduction to the four speeches that we will be performing. Three of them are mandatory and one of them is optional for extra credit. We have the magic minute speech, which in my other videos, I will get more in depth with what is included in that speech. That is our first speech. It's very short, um, delivered between 50 and 75 seconds. So it's about one minute long, so, um, not, too, not too long. We get a little bit longer with each speech. After the magic minute, we have the hot topic. That's a speech that's gonna be three to five minutes in length. Then we move on to the Who Am I speech, which is five to eight minutes in length. And these speeches are really preparing you for your SIP or Senior Inquiry Project, where you are going to give I think it's like an eight to 12 minute speech on your research and an accompanying um, presentation. So we're kind of building our way up from very short speeches to longer ones. And then the last speech is actually a speech competition, minute to win it style. And it's for you get extra credit if you participate just for speaking, and then there will be a winner in each class period that will get a special bonus prize, but more on that as we continue to move through this unit. So um, a very quick overview of the speech process and the nine steps involved. Step one is the focus. This is where you identify your audience and select and narrow your topic. Then we move on to step two, which is where you identify your purpose. Step three is where you develop your thesis of your speech as you do with all quality writing. Step four, we move on to researching and gathering the information that's going to make up the body of our speech. Step five is finally taking all those pieces together and writing your speech. And you would think that you would be done here because you have a written speech, but um, we're not just writing here, we're actually speaking. And you're not just reading your speech from the paper, you are performing it. So there are a few more steps involved for a quality speech. After your speech is written, you move on to step six, and this is where you create your visual aid that accompanies your speech performance. Um, a little bit more on visual aids is to come and what they include. Step seven is practicing your speech. Again, you're performing, so you need to practice and prepare just as you would rehearse if you were in a musical or a play or a dance recital or even a game if, for like um, athletes. Step eight is preparing your speaking notes. You're not left to your own devices when you're standing up on the podium to present your speech. You do get to have notes with you um, that will kind of guide your speech and help you out if you get a little bit nervous. And then finally, step nine is performing or delivering your speech to your audience. So this is a very long digital packet. I'm not gonna read every word on these pages. I'm just gonna walk you through the steps so you have an introduction to them. Step one, as I mentioned, is identifying your audience and narrowing your topic. I have a lot of information included to help you do that. Um, and then at the very bottom, I show you what this step looks like on your speech planning page. You're going to have a speech planning page before you perform every speech in our class besides the optional extra credit one. We will spend several days in class working on your speech planning page so that you feel prepared and ready when it is time to present your speech. So there's our step one box. I copied and pasted it right from your speech planning page so you know exactly what information you're going to have to be um, kind of adding into it. And then you can use, of course, all of the resources I provided above 
to help you kind of narrow it down and answer that box on your speech planning page. Step two, we move into your purpose, and there is a general and specific purpose to every speech that you perform. General purposes, there's three general purposes, so every time your speech is going to fall into one of these categories. I use the acronym PI to remember the three types of purposes, persuade, inform, or entertain. So you'll identify one of those purposes for your speech, and then you move into your specific purpose, which is this is the outcome you want from your audience after listening to your speech. What you want them to be able to do, what you want them to know, or how you want them to feel by the end of your speech. Think of this as the objective of your speaking performance. Um, generally, your specific purpose is always gonna sound or start the same. By the end of the speech, my audience will blah, blah, blah. So whatever purpose you want them to have or be able to fulfill after listening to you speak. At the bottom, um, we have our step two, copied and pasted from our speech planning page, where you will kind of go through and identify these purposes in your speech. Step three is where you write your thesis point and you identify three to five key points that must be in your speech because you couldn't possibly um, achieve your purpose without them. So there's questions here that will guide you to your thesis as well as some pointers for buckling down your key thoughts. And on your speech planning page, you're gonna account for step three in a box that looks exactly like this. Then we move on to step four, which is researching and gathering information. So one important thing, not every speech is gonna require you to do outside research. Some of them will, like our hot topic speech, you may need to do some outside research. But for your who am I speech, that's a speech that's about you. So your information is gonna come from you, but it's still included in step four. It's not always going to the internet or to the library or to books to find outside research. Sometimes your own stories your own personal knowledge and experience is enough to account for step four. Um, step four also guides you through the process of properly giving credit to your sources so that you can avoid plagiarism. And there is some pointers and some templates here that will help you give proper credit to your sources, as well as some guidelines for inserting your own stories into your speech as well. Step four on the template looks to be one of the longest ones, but um, there may be pieces on here that you don't use. For example, I gave you space for three outside sources, but you most likely won't use three outside sources for any of the speeches we're doing during the public speaking unit. But in the case that you do, and you go above and beyond, I wanted to make sure you had a template for each. So you will go through, identify your sources, whether it's your own personal knowledge and experiences or something you found outside um, in a different source, you will plan for that in step four, and then you move on to step five, which is writing your speech, because at this time, by this time, you have identified your purpose, your thesis, your key points, you've assembled your research and your stories, and now you're ready to put it all together. Step five on this page gives you a bunch of ideas for how you could start your speech, what you could include in your introduction, how you're going to shape your body paragraphs, and lastly, the kind of things that you're going to include in your conclusion. So there's a whole bunch of resources that will help guide you through that. And then you eventually do write your speech right on your speech plan planning, planning page um, in the template provided for you. There's a spot for your beginning, a spot for your middle, a spot for your end. Um, and your speech should be completely written before you move on to step six. I suggested at this point also copying and pasted, pasting your completed speech into a separate blank document just so you have the whole thing together in a place outside of just your speech planning page. Moving on to step six, this is where you are going to create your visual aid. So every speech that you perform besides the extra credit one is going to have an accompanying visual aid. So um, there's a bunch of different things you could use for a visual aid. You could use an object that could bring a lot of interest and appeal to your speech because um, usually objects appeal to the senses. You can see, taste, touch, hear, smell them. These are tough for remote presentations, but you can still utilize an object. 
models are a great thing to use if you want to show your audience something but you can't use the real thing like for example um, your speech is on an airplane and you can't exactly bring a whole airplane into the classroom but you could very easily bring a model plane instead people can make really great visual aids these can be friends relatives or yourself but they have to have a purpose within your speech you can't just invite your grandma to come and stand next to you while you do your speech if she's not significant to your speech anyway um, you could also use yourself as a visual aid like for an example if you're doing a speech about how to pitch a baseball you demonstrating the action would utilize your person very well as an effective visual aid drawings and posters are great visual aids photographs are great as long as you make sure they're large enough for your audience to see um, PowerPoints and Prezi's are awesome, as long as you keep in mind that less is more and that your slide should only add meaning to your speech. Um, in our, which video, your, our presentation video where we looked at the PowerPoint pictures and one was like crowded with information, you don't wanna do that. You don't wanna ever give your audience a visual aid that distracts from you because you are the main event. So your, your visual aid should just enhance your performance, but your, your audience should not be more focused on that than on you. Um, charts can be great visual aids. Handouts typically are great visual aids, but those are temporary unavailable due to the circumstances of our virtual classroom. And lastly, YouTube or short movie clips, as long as they're brief, um, they don't count towards your speaking time, but they can be used very effectively as visual aids. On your speech planning page, you're going to account for step six, your visual aid in a box that looks like this. And all you're going to have to do is just describe what visual aid you're planning on including. And then you're going to go on and make your visual aid before moving on to step seven. Step seven is practice, practice, practice. So your speech is entirely written. You've made your visual aid. And now it's time to put those two things together and practice performing it. You would not go into a soccer state championship without practicing with your team for a whole season before. You would not go up on stage and perform a concert without rehearsing with your ensemble before. Ensemble before. And the same goes for public speaking. You're not gonna perform a speech without practicing at first. There's a number of things that you can do to practice your speech. I have a bunch of them outlined for you right here. And then eventually you're going to account for it in step seven. After you've done some practicing, you just kind of um, reflect on what you did to practice for step seven. Step eight, creating your speaking notes. Very important. Um, if you don't have speaking notes, you are kind of left in the dark when you are performing. Performing is not reading your speech and not looking up at your audience. You bring it to life and you're animated, you're making eye contact, you're gesturing, you're pausing, you're playing with the volume and the pitch of your voice, you're accounting for pacing. There's a lot of things that go into performing a speech and your speaking notes help you remember when you're nervous up on stage what you need to do to execute your speech. So there's a lot of examples of how you could do your speaking notes. You could choose to print up your speech and annotate it. You could make digital annotations using Kami or a Google Doc. You could make note cards to use. Um, either way, there's some guidelines to follow. Make your font big on your speaking notes. That way you can quickly glance down if you forget what you need to say and find your place. Um, double space it, triple space it, make sure there's enough space that you can write in between the lines, um, the actions that you want to act out while you are speaking. Um, do not staple your pages together. You should not be flipping pages over like this. When you are performing, it takes away and it's distracting. You should just be sliding the papers underneath each other. I see that my time on this video is kind of coming to an end. So as much as I wanna show you my examples of speaking notes in this video, I will not have time to, but I will make sure that they get brought in to um, another video. So again, step eight on your speech planning page, you are just gonna kind of describe how you made your speaking notes. Step nine is delivering your speech. There's a whole bunch of pointers on here for verbal delivery, which is how you're actually speaking your your speech and also non-verbal delivery, which is more of your um, body movement, your eye contact, your posture, things like that that help bring your speech to life. And the last thing I want to address is anxiety when it comes to speaking, but I'm about to get cut out of this video in about 10 seconds. 
but please know that there is um, information and resources on this included.